This is part two of two videos on how to create a new background for your photos in Photoshop Elements. In part one, we isolated our subject from his original background, which was a cubicle. We saw how to capture the fine detail of his hair. In this video, we're going to do the fun stuff because we're going to look at some of the different ways and places in Photoshop Elements that you can use to create a new background for our subject. So let's go over to Elements and get started. Now that we have our subject isolated from his original background, we can put any new background that we want in place of the old one. So let's explore some of our possibilities. First we need to add a new layer to use for the new background. And we can add a new layer by clicking on the Create a New Layer icon in the Layers panel. So I'll do that. Whenever you create a new layer like that, it's always added above the layer that was active in the Layers panel when you click on the Create a New Layer icon. Our background copy layer was active, so the new layer is above it in the Layers panel. It's that layer 1 that was just added. But we want to use a new layer for a new color or whatever else we decide to put behind the sky. And that means the new layer needs to be below the background copy layer. We could just drag it down to where we want it in the Layers panel, but I want to take this opportunity to show you some other tricks you can use. So I'm going to get rid of the new layer by holding down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC as I click on the trash can in the Layers panel. Since the new layer is added above whatever layer is active when you click on it, you could just make the background layer active by first clicking on it and then click the Create a New Layer icon. So I could click on that and we want the new layer to be right in between these two layers. And that's exactly where it went. I'm going to get rid of that though because I want to show you one other trick you can use make this layer active again. Now with the background copy layer active, if I hold down the command key on a Mac or the control key on a PC as I click on the create a new layer icon, it will instead of adding it above the active layer, it will add it below the active layer. That's another way to get the layer, uh, the new layer where you want it. So now we can go up to the Edit menu and choose Fill Layer because our new blank layer that we just added is active so we want to fill it with something. And that dialog box appears from the Use field. If I click on that we have these different choices that we can fill that layer with. Let's start down on the bottom and choose white. So we'll click white and then click OK. That new layer is filled with white and it becomes our new background basically. What I recommend doing though is, you know, like it looks like the side of his face is messed up. We need to fix that, but maybe we don't need to fix it if it's not obvious with uh, whatever background we put in now. If we were going to use white, like we see here, we definitely would have to fix that. And we could do that by painting with black on our layer mask to conceal that edge of his face a little bit. I'll click on the layer mask to make it active. Get the brush tool. Make sure the foreground color is black. And I want to use a hard edge brush, which is already chosen and I'm going to zoom up a little bit on that area and now I'm just going to put the tip of my brush over that dark part that's showing al along his face. Now click once and then move down a little bit and hold the shift key and by holding the shift key if I click again it will take care of anything in between the area where I first clicked and where I click again and then I'll just kind of carefully clean up along here. Here I'll use the shift click method again and just get rid of that sharp edge there and then I'll click right there, hold down the shift key and move up a bit and just go around this area right here. We're zoomed in so 
at a normal view size it probably won't look that bad. Now down here it's a little tighter so I'm going to make my brush smaller by using my left bracket key and then I can get in there a little easier and clean that up. And I went too far on this spot so I'm going to press the letter X on my keyboard to switch my foreground and background colors because I want to paint with white now and then I can just carefully try to even the even the edge of his, his uh, face out there and good enough for demonstration purposes and we'll go back to 100 percent view you can see if we zoom up around here there's this gray spot along his shirt edge so let's see I'll click with black and then hold the shift key and then I'll just kind of click and drag around that edge and just try to clean that up a little bit so all done on the layer mask and not removing or adding any pixels it's completely non-destructive I don't want to spend too much time because I don't want this video to go on forever and ever but uh, I just want to show you that you can you can get in here um, it's one nice thing about using the layer mask option is that you can quickly clean up the areas let's zoom back down the side of his head here there's some kind of odd looking areas and there's some areas up here but I just want to show you depending on what background we put in behind him if we were to use white we would probably want to fix those areas need to be on our layer one now we can try different fills from the fill layer menu let's try 50 percent gray or we can choose to fill it with black Let's try something else. Edit, fill layer. Another option we have is to fill it with a pattern. Click on this little arrow. These are some patterns that come with um, elements. If we choose this one, say OK. And it fills uh, the background with that very wild pattern. Because it's such a busy background, that hides just about any imperfections that are along the edges of this guy. If something looks bad, then you can fix it at that point. But there's no sense doing work for no reason if you don't have to. I'm going to hide the visibility of that. There's this icon next to the Create a New Layer icon in the Layers panel. It's a circle that's half white and half blue. That is the Create a New Fill or Adjustment Layer. So let's click on that. From this pop-up list, we can select any of these first three options to put a different background in. So if I choose Solid Color, the Color Picker pops up and we can put any, any color we can find in there. We would say OK, and that's what we would have for our new background. Let me hide this layer and turn this pattern one back on. The layer is not active. OK, so Edit, Fill Layer, and one of the options from here is also Color. And when I click on that, the Color Picker pops up there too. It's the same, except I guess you don't see it until you say OK you commit to it and then it changes. I'm going to hide that again and turn this one back on, make it active and the next option down is gradient. So if we click on that and we get the gradient dialog window and there's the little arrow next to the gradient preview and if you click on that you get a pop-up that shows you these different options you can go here and choose from different sets of gradients also. Let's try metals, see what that looks like. And then you can adjust the angle of that and also this scale. You can play around with that. If you want to reverse the black and white, you can click on this little box here and it will reverse those colors. I'll say OK to that and then there's one other option, patterns again. It's just like when we went up to the edit fill layer 
dialogue, there's the arrow, and we see those same default uh, patterns. Actually, there's some other options in here that you can choose too. I hope that gives you some ideas for how you can change the backgrounds of your photos. And you can add gradients or colors or patterns. One other thing you can do, let me get rid of all these uh, extra layers that I have, or I'll just turn off their visibility. You can take another photo and put that behind your subject too. I have this other photo opened here. I'm going to press Command A or Control A on a PC to select all, and then Command or Control C to copy that photo, and then Command or Control D to deselect it. And now I'll go back to our other photo. I'll just uh, turn on the visibility for this layer and make it active, and then paste it. Get the Move tool, and we can move that around and take him out of his little cubicle and put him in a nice tropical island. And that wraps up this tutorial about how to create a new background for your photo. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.